Hello and welcome to HitFilm 2 Express. This video game inspired clip contains a bunch of different types of effects, which nicely demonstrate the type of effects HitFilm makes possible for you. Many of them, like the muzzle flashes, the sparks, and the lens flare, were created entirely in HitFilm. Others, like the dust and debris from the floor hits, use stock footage elements and take advantage of HitFilm's compositing abilities. We are providing this project and all the media that it uses to you for free because we want you to explore it, turn layers on and off, see how things are put together, and modify things in any way you want to. Digging through this project and making changes is a great way to get familiar with how HitFilm works and what it's capable of. To get you started, let's look at a few things together. We have a variety of muzzle flashes in this scene from different firearms. Select layer 25, the Cedric Flash, which contains the muzzle flashes from this Cedric fellow here in the back. Now he's carrying a machine gun, but he only actually gets off a couple of shots in the scene as it stands. We've got one there and another there. Let's edit this flash effect to make him a bit more trigger happy. Expand the layer by clicking this triangle next to the name. Then expand the core flare controls. For any layer on the timeline, you can access the controls here or in the control panel. You'll notice some little markers here on the timeline. Let's zoom in on those by dragging this zoom slider to the right. And there you can see we have four markers, which are keyframes. You can use keyframes to change the value of a property over time. So with this active property, these keyframes are turning the effect on and off. On and off. This toggle next to the name turns keyframing on and off for the given property. If it is green, then anytime we change the value for that property, a new keyframe will be recorded. So you can turn on keyframing for any property by simply clicking its toggle. Let's add some more flashes to this gunfire effect. Position your playhead just after the first two keyframes on frame 18. Now activate the flash by clicking the checkbox. Advance one frame by pressing the period key and turn the effect off. Now repeat this for the next two frames. Advance with the period key, turn it on, advance, and turn it off. We can add another flash here at the end. So position the playhead, turn the effect on, advance, turn it off, and in just a few moments, you have created an effect more reminiscent of automatic weapons fire. Well done. As you can see, there are lots of other controls for the flash as well that allow you to adjust the length, the radius, and other aspects of its shape. Play around with these controls a bit to get a feel for what results you can get and create a version of the gunfire effect that you really like. We also have another tutorial which focuses specifically on creating muzzle flashes. Let's adjust one other effect here. We'll close this layer and zoom back out. In general, the layer order on the timeline controls which layers appear to be in front of others. So the very bottom layer is our video footage, so all of our effects appear to be in front of it. Notice we have several groups of effects here and here. These three layers combine to create the effect of a bullet hitting the floor here, and then we have a second bullet hit here using these three layers. We have a bullet hole, a ground hit, which is the little dust cloud, and then a sparks effect. Right now, both of these bullet hits use the exact same spark effect. Perhaps we want to edit one so they aren't so similar. Locate the two sparks effects and select the one which starts second on the timeline, which is layer 27, and expand its transform controls. Because HitFilm's spark effect is 3D, we can edit the position and orientation of this layer on three different axes. For orientation, the second number will adjust the rotation on the y-axis, which is represented by this red arrow on the viewer. So as we click and drag on this second number, notice how the effect appears to rotate in the viewer. This is a quick way to effectively change the appearance of the sparks. Try using the other orientation controls to adjust the angle at which the sparks leave the floor. For a more detailed look at positioning 3D layers, please see our tutorial on the transform controls. For this same layer, open the sparks controls and we can adjust the actual effect itself. 
Change the amount slider to control how many sparks are present in the effect. You can adjust that to whatever suits your taste. Then change the spread property to adjust how directional the sparks are. You can use a very low angle to send them all off in one direction, or use a much higher angle to give them a wide dispersion. Again, adjust that to suit your taste. The goal is to make two floor hits that feel similar, but aren't identical. So anytime you're making adjustments to an effect, keep in mind how the finished version will match the other effects and fit into the rest of your scene. Experiment with modifying some of the other effects on the timeline as well, and see what you can come up with. In another video, we'll look at how HipFilm's tracking enables us to lock our effects in place in this scene, even though the camera is moving. And of course, you can find videos discussing a load of other HitFilm topics in the support section of HitFilm.com. HitFilm to Express. Shoot. Create. Share.